I'm Dennis Provinsky, and welcome to Grandpa Dennis's Wood Turning Studio. At this moment, this is not a joyous time. Life seems to always throw us a curveball. This week, a good friend of mine came to me to inform me that his adult son had passed away, and he wants me to make an urn for his son's ashes. Wood turning has always been joyous for me, but this project is going to be from the heart. This is the burl that I have picked out to make the urn. I'm going to trim it up so that it could fit into a pail and I can surround it with resin and put it into the vacuum chamber first, then into a pressure pot. Hopefully this will turn out as spectacular as I hope it will. This is a birch burl. It was sitting in my woodshed for 20 years, so it is dry and hard as stone. I'm now trimming it so that it'll fit into the pail for the process of casting in resin. Here we go. These are all the pieces that I'm going to put together into this pail, then fill it with resin, and then we'll do some turning. So let's get to it. Okay, I've sprayed the uh, stoner product in here. That's the mold release. This is the main piece of, of burl. This is a birch burl, and it's over 20 years. Being, it's been drying for over 20 years. This is an edge of that burl that I had cut off. So the main part of the burl is here. These are filler pieces just to reduce the amount of resin I'll be pouring in. But they may end up creating quite a good look if I turn the, the piece in this configuration. But if I turn it just in here, most of these would go away. So I'll mix up the resin. Two parts A, one part B. In the end, I mixed a gallon and a half of resin to fill the pail. The color was a copper brown. It's stunning. This is the pail inside the vacuum chamber. You can see the bubbles coming out and the vacuum pressure is significant. The wood is out of the pressure pot and the resin is solidified. Not quite ready for turning yet. That was a little easier than I thought it was going to be. Now I'm ready to try and put that on the lathe. I now have the piece lined up between centers. And in order to make sure that I've got enough pressure on here and that there's enough bite on the spur centers, I've got the spindle locked. I've got this tightened. Now I try and move this a bit and then tighten again.
There, that's not moving now. Okay. The plan is to have this as the bottom. I have to true this up, put a waste block on there for my faceplate. And then I can turn it around and attach it to the headstock of the lathe. Before I get going, I should tell you that I weighed this and it's 29.8 pounds. That's about as heavy as I've ever turned. It's not necessarily that big in diameter, but it is heavy. The first thing I have to do is true up that edge to make sure that it's running smooth and there's no wobbles in it. Now I'm adjusting the steady rest so that the green wheels will roll right on the trued edge of the piece. The purpose of the steady rest is to provide a great deal of support to the piece while I'm doing the other work.
this is what turning resin looks like once you get going. Now I'm preparing the opening on the urn. I'm drilling the hole and enlarging it and fitting it for the lid. This is the process to make the lid of the urn. I'm now using the hollowing tool to hollow out the urn. I'll be explaining that in more detail right now. The most difficult part of turning this piece is hollowing out the inside. The opening in here is relatively small so it's difficult to get in and see what you're doing. Also, if you're doing it freehand, there's always the possibility of getting a catch with the tip of the tool, which will then twist your arm or tear the piece right off of the lathe. This is my articulated arm system. As you can see, it moves around quite freely and the tip in the cutter is right here. Now this piece is secured in this tube with set screws so it will not move like that once the screws are tightened in and the cutting tip is right here. This apparatus is a laser pointer and you turn the light on and it's directly in line with the cutting tip. So as you see, the laser goes wherever the tip goes. You adjust this piece until the laser pointer dot is whatever thickness you want for the wall of your piece. Then, when this goes inside the bowl, and starts cutting, and it's cutting the tip. The tip is cutting the inside of the wood. That laser pointer is right wherever that tip is. So when that tip gets to the edge of the bowl, this laser dot will go and fall right through to the floor. Then you know the thickness in the wall is exactly what you had measured the pointer dot relative to the tip. So if you put the pointer to go a half inch from the cutting tip, as soon as the dot 
goes past the edge of the bowl, you know you're a half inch from that cutting tip. This is a leftover piece of birch burl, and I'm going to use this as a base for the urn. I've attached it to a waste block with hot glue. I've got the urn set up on my vacuum chuck and I've got some pressure from a plate on the top end just to keep sure make sure it's it's held in place. I've just finished shaping the bottom a little bit better. It's epoxied onto the urn. I've sanded it down to 400 grit. Now I'm going to apply a stain on here and I'll do the top as well and it'll be this dark brown color and I think that will will help bring the whole piece together. This is an alcohol-based stain. The more you put on, the darker it gets. You can lighten it up by using alcohol in here to uh, take off some of the stain. But I think this is going to be uh, absolutely perfect. Now, while I've got it on here, I'm going to do a little more refinement in terms of the polish, just to make sure that I've got everything nicely uh, buffed out and uh, no scratches anywhere. So that's going to be a little challenging. I've got the vacuum pump up. It's 27 inches. I think in this area with the um, altitude above sea level here being uh, not at sea level. I think fullest, uh, the most vacuum you can get is 28 inches and I think perfect vacuum is 30 and I don't think you can really get 30 uh, inches. At sea level you'll get close but a perfect vacuum isn't really achieved very well uh, on earth here. I'm using 600 grit just on the the bare wood. I don't want to get it on the epoxy because that'll scratch it. Final buffing with the triple E compound. Triple E compound is a, uh, a grit that's in a wax base that makes it solid. 
some of that wax has transferred onto the piece and denatured alcohol is going to take that off so that the finish can adhere. I think it's time for the final coat. Well, not the final coat, but a base coat. The product I'm using for a finish is three parts. One part polyurethane, one part pure tongue oil, and one part boiled linseed oil. You put it on so that it soaks in as much as you can and then you rub it all off. You rub off as much as you can. Stays overnight and cured, cures. Then do another buffing and another coat. Overnight, another buffing, another coat. I have time for three coats. Most bowls require three, four, five or even six coats before they can really bring out the luster of the piece. Now it's time for the, fun, for the uh, first coat on the lid part. You don't want that to happen. <clears throat> this is what happens to a workshop when a rush job is being done and you don't have any time to clean up or to put your tools away. If they fall on the floor, they stay on the floor until the job is done. Wow. The urn is completed. It started off just under 30 pounds and it ended up just over 10 pounds. It's 10 and a half inches at its widest and from top to bottom, it's 15 inches. Now I got something to say. It was an honor to help out a friend in a time of pain and sorrow. When it comes to friends, drop everything you're doing to help out. I got a chance to make something beautiful as a lasting memory of his son. <laughs>